excited. I really believe that God has a word for our hearts. How many came here expecting, wanting a word, wanting God to speak into your life? Well, you're in the right place. You're at church. So um, let's, um, let's open in prayer. Let's open in prayer. God, we thank you for each wonderful, precious person that you have drawn into this place, God. We thank you for each person listening live and watching live on Facebook. God, we just pray that your word would speak into our hearts. Lord, we don't want to just leave here and say that was a nice speech. But, Lord, we want to leave here with our lives changed. So, God, I pray that you will cultivate the soil of our hearts and our minds, Lord. Let your, your word take root. God, let it change us from the inside out. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. I, we're going to um, talk today. Uh, um, our subject today is can you hear him now? Can you hear him now? Developing your spiritual ear. We took a, a church survey a while ago. How many took our church survey? Yeah, you remember that? We took a church survey a while ago, and overwhelmingly, the results were that people wanted to hear or learn how to hear the voice of God, which was amazing. I mean, you guys could ask for anything. I'm like, we want to know about finances. We want to know how to come up. How can we shine out here? Like, you, you guys are really, y'all are wonderful. You wanted to know how can you hear the voice of God. And our pastor, Pastor Mike, has been preaching a mighty series this whole month. How many have been enjoying the series on how to hear the voice of God? So after all these messages, after all that's been poured out into us, and if you haven't been here, if you missed it, they're on Facebook Live. Check them out. They're amazing. But even after all that, the question is, can you hear him now? Even after everything that's been taught, everything has been said, can you hear him now? Can you hear the voice of God? And today we're going to be talking about how to develop our spiritual ears. Now, you might be looking at that and be like, I didn't even know I had spiritual ears. Like, what are those? Right? Did you, how many, you, you have spiritual ears. Tell your neighbor, say you have spiritual ears. Yeah, you have them. Yeah. Talk to them. Be friendly. You have spiritual ears. And just like it, is, it might be new for some, but just like in the physical realm, we have spiritual senses. Just like we have physical senses, we have senses in the spirit. Like eyes. In Ephesians 1.18, it says, Paul prayed that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened. We have spiritual eyes. We pray that God will open our spiritual eyes. We also, there's taste. In Psalms, it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Right? We also have touch. Remember the lady who touched the hem of his garment? That was way more than touching a piece of clothes, right? It wasn't the clothes that made him whole. When she touched him in the spirit, something happened that allowed all the healing virtue to go out of Jesus into her. There's a spiritual touch. There's also a spiritual smell. You guys didn't know that, huh? You got a sense. We have spiritual senses in, of smell. In 2 Corinthians 2 and 5, it says, For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved, among those who are perishing. Ever wonder why people just cling to you? Or people just like, oh, I'm going with you. Or they want to eat with you. They want to sit with you. And you're like, oh, I just want to be alone. Or you're on a bus or BART, and they just always make their way to sit by you. You're like, oh. Maybe it's the aroma that you're giving off in the spirit. Something about, if somebody said that, it's just something about you. That's spiritual smell. There's something, there's something that's fragrant about you. You're not giving off a smell of death. You're giving off a smell of life. And so we also get to ears. Eight times in the gospel and seven times in the book of Revelations, the phrase says, he that has an ear, let him hear. He that has an ear, let him hear. He said that so many times. So that just goes to show you that we do have an ear in there. If you have an ear, God is saying, let you, you need to hear. You need to hear. So tonight, today, we're going to talk about developing that spiritual ear. How many people are interested in that aspect of your life? All right, just make sure I'm talking to the right people. All right. Why do we need to hear the voice of God? Why? Why is that so important? It just sounds like something like, oh, okay, 
But how many need to discover your purpose in life? <laughs> I mean, we're pretty adult. Sometimes, even when you're in your adults, we think that's for kids. But when you're an adult, you're like, I'm 40 and I'm lost. Like, what am I supposed to be doing? Right? How many want to discover your purpose? Then you need to hear the voice of God. How many want to live a life of precision? Not just here, there, everywhere, arrows flying. I might be doing this. I might be doing that. Then you need to hear the voice of God. How many are tired of walking around lost and aimless in life? Just don't know where to go, what to do, who to talk to. You need to hear the voice of God. How many are tired of making the same mistakes over and over and over and over and over again? Guess what? You need to hear the voice of God. And if you're tired of wasting your time, wasting your money, wasting your heart, it is very important that you learn how to hear the voice of God. Why? Because one word from God can change everything. You got to believe that. Just one word, one word from God will change everything. It could change the whole course of your life. It could make all the difference in the world. And if you're not hearing from God, then you're just out there floundering, lost and aimless. And we don't want to do that. Um, we want to look at a, a verse, Isaiah 30 and 21, our next slide. You guys see how I, I'm not controlling my own. You guys remember that? I've been set free. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm giving control. Thank you, Brother Marcel. Love you. Yeah. All right. Isaiah 30, 21 says... Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. How many want to sign up for that program? <laughs> Woo! Can you imagine? God, should I do this? Should I do this? Oh, yeah, this way. No, 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 that way. Always hearing a voice telling you what to do, where to go. We need to sign. This is why we need the, the voice of God. There's also, and if you have your Bibles, because I want you to use them since you took them, um, I want you to turn to uh, Psalms 29. It was way too long to put on a slide, but I just wanted you to see how important the voice of the Lord is. How it's not on here. Yeah, there it is. Look at it. Right there. I just made a, um, it's, it's fairly long, not really long, but I just want you to see it for yourself. Psalms 29, if you have a Bible, a Bible app, or you currently have a physical Bible, Go ahead and turn there. I'm starting at, voice, uh, at, at verse 3. And I want you to just see, before we, I'm just trying to build a foundation so you can see how important the voice of the Lord is. It says in verse 3, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The, the God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. You got to believe that. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, breaks the cedar of Lebanon. Imagine going to the redwoods, those big redwoods, and those just getting sawed down by only what? The voice of the Lord. How many things, you have some, some high and tall and big things in your life? Guess what? The voice of the Lord will cut right through that. Verse 6. The voice, he makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syria like the wild, young wild ox. You got some wild, untamed things in your life? Guess what the word of the Lord will do? It'll make those things just skip on, just start running. Things that just wasn't doing nothing, that just wasn't acting right. The voice of the Lord will do this. Also in verse 7, the voice of the Lord flashes forth flames and fire. He will burn up everything in your life that's not so, supposed to be there. That's what the voice of the Lord will do. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. You need some things that need to be shaken. You need some things that need to be unearthed that looks like they're not moving. It's the voice of the Lord that does that in your life. It shakes. The voice of the Lord will cause the oaks to whirl. It strips the forest bare. In his temple, all say glory. That's what, that's what we're dealing with, the voice of the Lord. It's powerful. It's mighty. We need it. It's so wonderful. 
I also want to uh, bring up the next slide, but, you know, a lot of us, we'd be like, well, how do I know I'm hearing from God? I, you know, anybody, are you guys there with me? You're like, I don't know. <laughs> that was kind of not sure. Um, the next slide will tell us how to distinguish the, God's voice from the enemy's voice. I thought this was very interesting. I'm going to turn around and see. God's voice will steal you, but Satan's voice rushes you. God's voice will lead you, but Satan's voice pushes you, right? God's voice will reassure you, but Satan's voice will frighten you. God's voice will enlighten you, but Satan's voice confuses you <laughs> all the more. God's voice encourages you. Satan's voice discourages you. God comforts. Satan worries you. God's voice calms you. But Satan's voice obsesses you. You can't go to sleep. It's just going around in circles. You can't get rid of it. God's voice convicts you, which means that he's going to prompt you to change in a loving way. But Satan's voice condemns you. You're nothing. Are you serious? You do that again? You're dumb? You're stupid? You're smart? You know, that's how you can discern whether it's God or Satan. Remember, God's voice is powerful. And it always leads you. It leads you into goodness, all right? But so we're here. We got this. We're understanding the voice. But how do we hear God's voice more consistently? Do anybody want to feel like, okay, yeah, I hear him every now and then. Maybe. I think it's him. But do you have, am I in the right place? you want to hear God's voice more consistently? Well, in order to do that, and you could just go to a, a blank screen at this time. Um, in order to do that, we have to change our perspective about God, and I really feel strongly about this. We need to change our perspective about God. You need to know that God delights in you, and he wants to talk to you. That is such a big misconception. We think that God is just, you know, out there stingily, like, I don't know, I might talk to you today, I might not. Depends on how you're acting. You know, he's not like us or like, you know, you get mad at somebody you're like, I'm not talking to you. Right? That's not God. He wants to talk to you. Tell your neighbor he wants to talk to you. Come on, tell somebody. He wants to talk to you. You need to know this. His original plan, if you go to Genesis 3, Genesis 3, 8, is a very interesting voice, a, a very interesting verse. It says that the voice of the Lord walked through the garden. They would have fellowship with God. He would just walk through the garden with them. It's his voice. It was in the, in the original plan, God had fellowship. With it. We were just cre created just to have fellowship with him. It was just nothing that came between us. It was just him. Oh, yeah, they, oh, they are fancy. I see you, Brother Marcel. Thank you. The voice of the Lord would just walk. This was God's original plan. For us to have fellowship with him, unhindered, unencumbered. They would just have, they would just walk through the garden just being with God. But then as we know, sin separated us from God. Once sin came into the world, sin separated us. So that disconnect you feel, that's our sin nature. That's sin. Sin keeps us from the voice of God. But this is what you need to know. God is always speaking. He's always speaking. He's not being stingy with his words. He's always talking, and he wants to talk to you. He doesn't want to hold out from you. He's not being stingy. He's not ignoring you. That's what the devil wants you to believe. He's ignoring you. He doesn't care about you. you see what you did last night? He's not talking to you. That is a lie. God is always speaking. Hearing his voice is not, it's not a great mystery. Think, here it is. It's not a big mystery. It's not just reserved for the select spiritual. Oh, that's for them. That's for the preachers. That's for the people who really pray. That's for the people who really are trying to do that. I just go to church every now and then. No, no, no. God is always speaking. He's always wanting to talk to you. He's yearning for you. He wants to have this relationship with you. He wants to talk to you. He has so much he wants to tell you. He doesn't want you out there lost and wandering aimlessly and don't know which way to go and confused. That's not his will for you. He wants you to live a life of precision. 
So can we just take a moment, can we just take a moment and just acknowledge how wonderful this God is, that the God of the universe, think about it, who made the heavens and earth and everything in it, wants to take time to talk to me? How amazing is that? The Lord that made heaven and earth, and remember when he made the earth, what what was his building material? What is the only thing that he did to, to create the heavens and the earth? He spoke. So what does God want to speak into your life? What does he want to build in your life? What does he want to create in your life just by his voice, by his word, by his word? He's so amazing. The second thing you need to know if you want to hear God more consistently is that I want to ask you a question before we get to that. I want to ask you a question. What is... Think about this. What is your motivation for wanting to hear the voice of God? I want you to really think and and kind of do some self-reflection. What is your motivation for wanting to hear the voice of God? Think about that. Because a lot of times we just want God to provide a GPS service for us. We just want him to be Siri, and that's it. Which way do I go? What job should I take? Who should I marry? Which house should I go to? Which, where should I put the application, here or there? And it's like, okay, thanks, God. Okay, bye. But what is your, really, really, I want you to think about, what is your true motivation for wanting to hear the voice of God? Because we don't want to treat God like he's the genie, all right, on Aladdin. He just gives us three wishes, And he's also not the magic eight ball. You guys remember that growing up? Magic eight ball. Should I go to this dance? And it would just, (laughs) yes, yeah. Right? Remember magic eight ball? I mean, you asked that thing a thousand questions. Does Brian like me? (laughs) God's not the magic eight ball, people. Nor is he the, the psychic hotline that we call when we're just needing some answers. It's kind of how we treat God, and that's kind of how we want to treat his voice. I want to hear from God. Why? Because I want to know whether I should go to the school or not. Should I date this person or not? And that's kind of like the extent of it. But I want to challenge you. Will you seek his voice because you love him and because you want to get to know him better. And that's it. Because he said, remember, seek first the kingdom of God and all in his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. So if you seek him, seek his heart, seek his face, just want to know God. Just want to hear him because I want to, God, I just want to have, I just want to know you. I just want to have fellowship with you. I just want to. I just want to spend time with you. I just want to hear what you got to say to my heart. Like, how can you, who do you want me to talk to? Where do you want me to go? How do you want to use me? Let that be your motivation for hearing God's voice. And then those other things, yes, are very important to God. He wants you to know where you should go and who you, where you should be and who you should date and where all that. That is very important, but it's not our primary motivation. Amen? Also, don't expect to hear God's voice consistently in your life if you have no intention of obeying it. Can I say that one more time? When you want to hear God's voice consistently, don't expect to hear his voice in your life on an ongoing basis if you have no intention on obeying him. This is very important because we're quick to say, I want to hear God, I want to hear God, and then he tells you something, you're like, mm-hmm. Ain't it down me? I didn't hear nothing. La, la, la. Right? If you want to hear God's voice more, obey what he's already told you. That's for somebody in here. Because we want more. It's like we're, we're greedy. We're hoarders. Like, I want more. Well, what did you do with what he just said? Because you still ain't went and said sorry to so-and-so. If you want to hear God's voice more, obey what he's already given you, and then treasure it. 
Keep a journal of it. Write it down. When you feel God's telling you something, treasure that thing. Don't just be like, ah, hmm, ah that was fine. I will. And kind of throw it and walk away and act like it's, it was no big deal. That he's just given you spoken life and changed your whole perspective. Right? Treasure what he has. Have you ever heard from God and ignored it? We've all been there. I've woo, been there, done that, got a T-shirt. And the, what's the first thing you say when they all go wrong? Something told me. I knew I shouldn't have went. I, something told. I, I, see, I just did. I went my own thing. Did my, so the more we all been there when we've heard him and we did not obey him. The more you hear God and the more you push him away, the less and less you will hear his voice. Y'all hear me? The more he talks to you, the more you're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. God's not, God's not wasting words. <laughs> he's, not, he's not out to just try to convince somebody, you know, uh, look, I'll, I'll holler at you when you're ready. God's not into, you know, continuing to tell you things and you're just ignoring him. So you want to hear him more. There is a responsibility to hearing the voice of God. There is a responsibility to hearing the voice from God. That's why people don't want to hear it. That's why they're la la lying. Because if they truly heard God's voice, you're going to have to react to it. If you don't believe me, I got a verse for it. Take it away, Brother Marcel. <laughs> Matthew 13. It says, I'm going to read it with you guys. This is Jesus speaking. You will indeed hear but never understand. You will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears, and with their ears, they can barely hear, and their eyes have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn, and I will heal them. See, there is a very important shift that happened in there. Because the responsibility is, once you see and once you understand, you have to turn. It's the only way you could be healed. So a lot of us ignore God <laughs> because if we really hear it and we really see it, we're going to have to act on it. And we're not ready to act on it. So I'm just going to ignore it. But everyone knows how it feels to hear that gnawing voice and just continue to be like, oh, it's pulling you, it's drawing you, right? There is a responsibility to hear. And so our answer should be when we hear God speaking to us, when, he, when you hear him calling your name, our answer should be like, like little Samuel. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. That's our, that's our, that's our answer. Pastor Mike spoke a great word about Samuel when he heard God in the temple and he kept going back and like, wait, was it me? Wait, wait, was it you? And then we finally figured out it was God. His only response was, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. How many people got whoopings because you didn't, you, 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 you heard, but you didn't listen? Yes, I see my son in the back. Yes, raise your hand. He's waving. You heard me, but you're not listening. A lot of times we hear, but we're truly not listening. So there are different forms of hearing, right? There's kind of dull hearing. Like, I think I hear God saying, you know, it's not quite clear. Kind of, maybe that's God, maybe it's not. Maybe I had pizza last night, I'm not sure. Um, then there's selective hearing that we all got whoopings over. Back in the day. You only hear what you want to hear. Am I alone? Did y'all? No, y'all don't whoop no more. Sorry. Y'all got new kids. Y'all got a timeout. Y'all don't. <laughs> you just hear what you want to hear. We do that with God. So we got dull hearing. We got selective hearing. You got to just hear. Oh, I just want to hear about blessings. I don't want to hear about sin and stuff. No. Just want to hear, what is God going to do again? I got a check coming or mail or, right? And then there's like alert hearing. We hear God. We're acting. We're on it. But then, then there's a whole other category 
which is like death. Like when we're just death to God. Like we have no clue. <laughs> we don't hear nothing. We don't know what God is saying. We don't know what he's doing. It's just, we're just death. How many have felt death to God's voice? I have. Like, God, I don't have a clue. I don't know what to do. I, I don't hear you talking at, at all. Well, there's a miracle for that. I want you guys to, to hear this. There's a great miracle. And it's in um, Mark chapter 7, verse 31 through 35. It's a miracle. And it truly is a, it's a God thing, right? Thank you, Kanye. It truly is a God thing. It's a God thing. Whenever God does this, whenever he opens up your heart, whenever he opens your ears, we are all spiritually deaf. And it's going to take a miracle to open our ears. And I just love this story. This is a great story. We're in Mark chapter 7, and um, we're almost done. We go out and have brunch. Mark chapter 7, um, we're going to start at... um, Verse 32, I believe it is. And we're just going to break this down. It says, um, and they brought him, brought, and they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hands on him. So this is an interesting case. This guy couldn't hear, and because he couldn't hear, he couldn't talk. His hearing impacted his speech. He couldn't talk right because he couldn't hear right, which reminds us a lot of us. We can't talk right. We're not talk. We kind of talking reckless. We got a lot of things coming out of our mouths that's not quite right because we're not. We can't hear. We can't hear what God is saying. So we just. I'm tired. I hope I die. I hope I. We just talking crazy, right? So they brought this man to him, verse 33. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, let's just stop right there. Jesus, all these people like, Jesus, please lay hands on this man. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, here. Yeah, yeah, just bring him to Jesus. Jesus, please. They wanted him so bad to lay their hands on him. So what Jesus did was like, okay, I see the crowd, I see. But he took him aside, which is very interesting. Because in order to develop your spiritual ear, you must get alone with Jesus and away from the crowd. You got to get alone with him. Sometimes we can't hear God's voice because we're so distracted by so many other voices. So much is going on. If you're like me, there's always a radio on. There's always a TV on. There's always music in my car. There's always, you know, I got Netflix going. I got a, uh, I'm watching three different things. There's Sports Center going. Like, there's always something. There's always radio on the car. There's always, when I get to work, so you put on, you put on your music on your computer. Anybody like me? When do we have time? The only time is really quiet is probably when you're sleeping, you're unconscious, and you can't even hear anything, <laughs> right? So many distractions. But Jesus is like, okay, I got you. I'm going to pull you away from the crowd. Jesus is pulling you. you I got to listen. You got to pay attention. So sometimes he's pulling you away. And you're wondering, why am I wide awake at 3 in the morning? I am so annoying. I can't go to sleep. Why did my radio break? Oh, I hate this. Cable bill, my cable got turned off. Oh, I'm dying. No internet. What do I do? Sometimes God is trying to pull you away, trying to get you away. Come on, come on, come over here privately. I want to do something for you. I want to do something for you. Look what God, look what he did for him in verse 33. He said, um, this part I, I kind of had trouble with. You guys help me out. Because he put his fingers in his ear and after spitting, touched his tongue. I was like, ew, Jesus. Why'd you do that? Like, you could have just, like, spoke. Did you see the other miracles you did? You just was like, she's healed. Just go. Like, you really could have just spoke this, Jesus. Like, I don't know how necessary this was. 
He put his, in, his finger in his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue. So many other ways, Jesus. Um, I've seen it. It's in there. Have you guys seen the miracles? Like, he was just like, you're healed. Or, oh, you're you know. Which made, I was so puzzled. But then God really spoke to me about this. And it was like, you got to look at this. Jesus really wants to be that intimate with us. He wants to get in to all your yucky parts and touch it. He wants to get into every little, look how intimate he was with this man. He could have, if I would have been like, hey guys, come up here. All right, I need volunteers. I need someone to stick your finger in your neighbor's ears. You guys would be like, um, no. Do we have gloves? Do we, what? We're not even willing to get that, that close to earwax. And then, like, he spit on him, and then he put his spit on that man. So look how intimate and close he got with this man. Touched all the things that we would consider yucky. Like, ooh, like, uh, like a stranger. Maybe your kids, you might, like, get earwax, but a stranger? My kids used to hate when I did that. <laughs> right? Is ew. But look what Jesus did. He spit. He wanted the consistency of his mouth to be in, in the man's mouth. Look at that. Jesus wants what's in his mouth to be in your mouth. That's how he wants to heal how you talk. Let, let what's in his mouth. He touched it. He spit. He put his spit onto his tongue. I want what's in my mouth to be in your mouth. I'm going to touch all the yucky parts of your life. Let me get all up in there. I want to get that close with you. See, we think Jesus is far and he's sitting high and he's looking. No, he wants to get, imagine him getting all up in your grill, all up in there. The stuff nobody want to touch, Jesus wants to touch. Come on, Jesus. And then what happened? And on th verse 34, and looking up to heaven, he sighed. It's like, oh, man. I always wonder what that sigh was for. Was it like, oh, these people? Or was it like, oh, I just care about this person so much? Like, oh, I want this so much for them. He sighed, and he said to him, Epata, that is, be open. Be opened. And his ears were open, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Yes, he did. It was a miracle. And that's what God wants to do with us. This is how we develop a spiritual ear. God is saying, be open today. He's saying it's available to you. Your ears can be opened. He wants to do this for you. He's, Jesus fulfilled the, the messianic prophecy that this is what he'll do. He'll heal the lame. He'll, he'll cure the blind. He'll open ears. And this is just not a physical miracle. This is what he wants to do in our spirit. You can leave here with an open ear to hear what God wants to speak into your life. It's not a great mystery. He's not holding back on you. He's not keeping it a secret from you. He learns and young, longs to talk with you, to spend time with you, to tell you all the things about your life, to explain things, to point you in the way that you should go. He wants to tell you. He wants to explain the, the word more to you. He wants to explain to you how you can reach more people, how you can be more effective, how your life can have purpose. He wants to share all these things with you. So there's good news today. If you are a follower, if you are a follower of Jesus, then you can hear his voice. Tell yourself, say, I can hear his voice. I can hear his voice. I need you to really believe that. Tell yourself, I can hear his voice. Because the devil doesn't want you to believe that. We don't want to believe that. We feel like we're so unworthy to hear God. Well, that's why he died for us. 
If he could get all up in that yucky man's stuff, he don't mind getting all up in your stuff either. Um, John uh, 10 and 27 says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. It's a, it's, a, it's a guaranteed principle. If you are a follower of Jesus, you, my friend, are a candidate to hear his voice. It's as simple as that. All you have to do is believe. Will you believe it? And when you believe it, are you willing to hear him and obey it? That's the, that's the caveat right there. When he speaks to you, will you obey? Will you trust the Father's heart that he won't tell you anything that's crazy or hurtful? Or, you know, we hear all these stories like, really, I don't want God to tell me that. Like, doing crazy things or walking up to people, God forbid, talking to people. Don't tell me to talk to anybody. But we have to run, understand we have to trust his heart. And if we really want him to use us, he wants to use us to reach and touch other people, which might require him using you to talk to people, to be a blessing to somebody. He might tell you to give someone money. Like, oh, man, I was going to the movies. <laughs> Here you go. But watch what God does with your life. That person will be like, I was... I didn't know how I was going to make it. I didn't know how I was going to get home. I was praying for God to send me a miracle, and here you come with $5. Thank you. You never know how God wants to use you, so will you be open? So here's the key. Here's the key. A lot of times, God is quiet because we are asking for things that we already have. A lot of people are like, I can't hear God. He won't talk to me. Well, guess what? You're a follower of Jesus. You're a sheep. You already have access to his voice. Why are you begging for it? Why are you like, well, Jesus, please, please, please? It's like that kid you ever see, like, if you go, ever go swimming, that kid that's, like, nearly drowning in two feet of water. You're like, just stand up, kid, you know? <laughs> that's all you got to do. That's kind of how we're with God, like, God, I'm dying. Help me, God. He's like, I just need you to stand on the legs I gave you. Just receive what I already have. He's quiet sometimes because he wants you to exercise your own faith. God, I know I can hear from you. I know you're available to me. I know that you want to talk to me. I know that you're here for me. I'm just going to believe it. So we also need to just slow down. Help me, Jesus. Slow down and spend, this is the point, the key, uninterrupted time with God with no distractions. How do you do that in the 21st century? I'm trying to figure that out. Slow down, spend uninterrupted time with God. How would it look if your closest relationship, thinking about the person you're closest to, the one person you're closest to, how would that relationship look if all you, every time you spend time with it, you, you just do it moving. Like, we're having coffee? Cool. We're going to, I need to tell you about things. You guys are always on the phone. You're always walking and talking. Come on, just walk with me. Come on. And you're just doing things. You never sit down and just have a conversation. But that's your closest friend. But you're like, girl, I'm going to call you. Okay, I'm going to FaceTime you. Okay, come on, just walk me to my car. Just like you're always, the, that's the only time you have together. And that's your closest friend. What kind of relationship would that be? But that's how we do God. We do it moving. Come on, Jesus, while I'm getting in this car. Come on, Lord, bless me and keep me today. Yes, Lord, while I'm driving. Lord, help me on today. Why'd you cut me off? Like, we got a whole bunch of stuff going. We just like, Jesus, thank you, thank you. We just do it moving with God. And then I wonder why I can't hear God speaking to me. Uninterrupted, quiet time. With God, I'm going to go back and say, maybe that's why you up at 2 a.m. Nobody liked that one. All right, I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to just keep going on that. You have to, if you want, a, if you sincerely want to hear his voice, you got to take some time. It doesn't mean, it doesn't have to have an hour. It doesn't have to be a whole week of, just some time. Go for a walk. Go turn off everything. Put your attention, your posture, your attention on God. And see what will happen. 
Now, how does God talk to us? Sometimes we're a little confused, like, well, what am I going to hear? Like, I don't know. It's like, well done, my good. And we're like, what, what are we going to, like, we're kind of scared. Like, what is this going to be like? So these are some ways that God talks to us. First of all, he talks to us through the Bible. Through the Bible. That's the number one way that God will talk to you. Have you ever been there? Have you just opened the Bible and you read a verse and it's exactly what you're going through? And you're like, how did you know this was written a thousand years ago? Oh, my gosh, this is for me, right? And so a lot of times if I'm hearing people correctly and they're like, I just can't hear from God, first thing I want to hear, I want to ask is, well, how much are you reading your Bible? Because we want to hear from God, but we're not doing what it takes to hear from him. Read your word. There's so many wonderful translations. There's no excuse anymore. I always say this. You don't have to use King James anymore. There are English translations that are so easy to read, there's no excuse. Read your word. That's how God speaks to you. Another way that God speaks to you is through the preached word. The way, what you're sitting here right now, how many feel God speaking to you right now? God will speak to you through the preached word of God. Also, God will speak to you in your knower. I don't know what it's called. I call it a knower where you just know. You ever just been through something, you're going through something, and you just know? You can't explain it? Like, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do or exactly what I'm supposed to say. How do you know? I don't know. I just know. It's in my knower. God has a knower in there, and I just know in my knower that this is what I'm supposed to do. And you can't tell me otherwise. So God will put something in your knower, for lack of better terms. He also will speak to you in a small, still voice. Not this loud, you know, thunder rolling, Gina, you know, nothing like that. But a small, still voice. Have you, have you felt that before? It's just the most beautiful thing in the world. You can't even describe it. It's just a small voice, and you just know that it's God speaking to you. He also will speak to you through signs, through dreams, through visions, through images. A lot of people see images, and they just know. Some, sometimes God speaks to people through numbers. They'll just keep seeing the number five everywhere. And they'll just mean something that God's already told you before. He confirms his word to you. And also, he'll confirm things through other people. Have you ever seen that? Somebody will just be talking to you, and they don't know nothing about your life, or they'll just talk randomly, and you're like, oh, my gosh, that's exactly what I was. How did you know? <laughs> did you even? So God will use other people to talk to you. Those are the ways that we can hear God's voice. So we're just going to close. I have this. I want to close on this last thing. Um, I listen to my local radio station while I'm driving in my car. When I drive away from the radio tower, the signal gets weaker and weaker. But if I turn the car around, and drive back into town, the signal becomes stronger and stronger, and I can hear it again. In the same way, we stop hearing God when we drift away from him. But if we will turn around and come back to him, we'll hear his voice again. The closer we are to God, the clearer we can hear him. Yes, God. The Bible says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. So we have questions. Those who are in small groups, I please, I encourage you to be in small groups. These are things we could discuss this week. You could write it down. You take a picture, some questions that you could think about this week when it comes to the voice of God. What is your motivation? How would you describe your current spiritual ear? How is God drawing you away from distraction so that you can hear him more clearly? In what ways have you recognized God's voice before? And this week, how can you spend more intentional, uninterrupted time with God? God wants to know, can you hear me now? I died. Jesus is saying, I died that you could have a right to talk to God. Take advantage of it. 
use it. You have all access to God. There's no reason for you to be lost and far away. God is calling you near. So can we just have everyone stand? We just want to have a time of prayer and reflection. Don't worry about who's on your right or on your left. Just want you to just concentrate on your relationship with God. Like my favorite little girl on the internet. Just worry about yourself. Ooh, I love that little girl. Worry about yourself.